Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books. Today we're talking about No Fear. There is No Fear at the Zaslov team, which of course includes Zaslov and Gunnar Wiedenfels. Everybody loves him. Uh, yesterday we did a video about how um, he's hated in Hollywood. Zaslov do, is hated in Hollywood. There's article after article after article. And I came across another article I thought that was really interesting because you, you don't see any sense of anxiety or concern or worry about uh, what they're doing for Warner Bros. Discovery at the management team level, but you do see it uh, with article after article from, this one's from Vanity Fair, high anxiety in Hollywood. Everyone is totally drained and burnt out. Talking about Warner Bros. Discovery, uh, CEO David Zaslov's attempts to allay fears in a town hall meeting, but layoffs and cost cutting have amped up existential dread. So what's the existential dread? The dread is like, oh, my world is ending. It's like, well, if you work at Warner Brothers Discovery, and I know some of the people that listen to this because your comments actually do work at Warner Brothers Discovery, you just got to do your job. You know, they're going to be very clear with what they want and what's expected. And you just have to do it because this is not the kind of company that is set up to just please Hollywood, to keep relationships good to have everyone in Hollywood think of you and say, oh, well, we love this guy. We just love this guy. He's so accommodating. They're not looking to be accommodating. They're looking to make money. And that's great for stockholders. That's great for people that care about the brands. Um, and it's great for everyone that just, they want to be a team player. But when people want to do things for themselves or for their own agendas or for social justice or for representation only, it's not going to work. It's just not going to work at Zaslov's Warner Brothers Discovery. All right, we will get into this article. We have a couple other things to touch on as well. Before we do get into the article, I'm going to ask you to please subscribe to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. Really appreciate that. Share it on social media. All right, so let's get into the article. Again, coming from Vanity Fair. And, you know, Vanity Fair, they're a little bit slanted on the leftist side, just to have to tell you. High anxiety in, ho anxiety in Hollywood, everyone is totally drained and burned out. Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zaslav attempts to allay fears at a town hall. We did cover that. He did tell everyone they are not selling the company. But of course, people that want things to be completely stable and, and be in their own little bubble and not have to do merit-based performance, those people are a little bit nervous. When Warner Brothers Media CEO Jason Kylar announced in April that he would leave the company after its merger with Discovery was completed, he promised to gift staffers with photos he'd taken during his frequent walks around the Warner Brothers studio lot. And how much fun that must have been for Jason Kylar to just run around the studio lot and take pictures. At the time, the workforce that Kyler had led through the pandemic was largely optimistic about the future under new leader David Zaslov, partly because the $43 billion deal he engineered would move the company out from under the telecommunications giant AT&T. Here was a leader who had worked in entertainment for decades, meaning Zaslov. He had even bought the Beverly Hills house once owned by the late Robert Evans, who was the producer of The Godfather. But Zaslov is making offers that people cannot refuse. Now, it should also be said, so I'm going to say it, Jason Kylar um, <laughs> made a point of letting some people go as well and also letting people know like, hey, Jason Kylar is going to do things Jason's way. And I'm impressed with Kylar. You know, he was a founder of Hulu. Um, he made that very successful. People are crazy about uh, Hulu. They have tremendous um, successful distribution subscriptions for um, a big, big, big asset for Disney, um, partially owned still by uh, Comcast, NBC Universal, though they didn't have uh, a lot of good international distribution ever uh, at Hulu. It, it's just always been like a, you know, a local domestic kind of thing, but still, um, you know, very innovative for the time. However, Kylar could not really make things work for Warner Media. Now, by the time Kylar's gifts, photos of the studio's iconic water tower, among other things, accompanied by a note extolling his talented and world-class team, made their way to employees' mailboxes earlier this month, the tenor had shifted, according to interviews with multiple insiders. In his first few months as CEO of the, comp of the new behemoth, Warner Brothers Discovery, Zaslov, or DZ, as he's known to staffers, they also call him the Zaz, has installed many, <laughs> they just do, I, I come across that in articles all the time, 
has installed many of his most loyal Discovery lieutenants atop the company, leaving senior Warner Media executives with almost no choice but to seek jobs elsewhere. Well, I mean, they could just follow instructions. Um, you know, that might be shocking, but no, they, they, they want what they want. They want it on their terms. And it's good. It's just um, very positive to see that like, no, you, you can't just do whatever you want. You have to do what's good for the brands and for the company, not just for yourself and your social agendas. He's also made quick work of the promise to slash the company's 50 billion in debt, shelving, now, you know, it's funny because this comes up in article after article because yes, they canceled Batgirl, they, they canceled Scoob, uh, they canceled a lot of Little Watch shows and movies from HBO Max, beginning a series of uh, rolling layoffs as well as uh, insiders expect to continue through the end of the year. There will be more layoffs and you will see more videos from me saying layoffs tomorrow and then the layoffs happen. You know, we, people are always interested in layoffs and it's important to be aware of like how they're changing uh, the company. But slashing, the way they were able to cut a lot of their debt, which was it was 58 billion since uh, April 22, uh, and now it's down to like 52 billion. They paid off the 6 billion of it. And you don't pay off the debt by canceling Batgirl. You pay off the debt because they have a lot of what's called uh, free cash flow, which in the last quarter was 2.5 billion. So they can take that and they can pay that down. They can also pay it down with the extra cash on hand. So they've got money, they're paying the debt. They paid down 6 billion already of it. Zaslav has promised to prioritize theatrical releases for Warner Brothers movies and to focus on fiscal responsibility over streaming growth. But investors are skeptical so far. Investors are absolutely skeptical. That is true. The company's stock has lost more than 50% of its value since the merger closed. Now, that is the market price value. They didn't lose money. It's not that they lost money and it was $20 billion of loss, something like that. The company did report a loss but it was something like $3 billion. It wasn't uh, uh, the equivalence of the stock losing more than 50% of its value. The problem with the stock value, as I mention often, but it's true, is that 71% of the merged company was given for free to AT&T shareholders that never wanted the stock in the first place. That was just part of the deal to make it a lucrative tax-free deal that was coordinated with AT&T. What AT&T wanted was they wanted to be able to get out of this deal without having to prove and show that they had a major loss to AT&T because they already lost literally $50 billion on the stupid direct TV deal that AT&T's management did. They also lost billions on the AT&T deal uh, with WarnerMedia. I haven't seen a good summary of it. And to be honest, it would take about 16 to 20 hours for me to search through financial reports I can't do that right now. I have other things I have to do too. You guys are worth it, but you know, making videos is one of the things I have to do. I, I can put an hour or two into it a day. I, I can't put 20 hours into uh, research to see exactly how much money was lost on AT&T. And I got to get credit, uh, John Stanky at AT&T for being so good to, to figure out how to hide the losses from the Warner Media transaction because they were extensive. But, but the point is this, when AT&T just dumped AT&T's ownership of Warner Media on their shareholders, part of the transaction was 71% of the stockholders or AT&T shareholders were like, well, the only way for me to get money out of this is to sell it. So there's been tons and tons and tons of selling from those shareholders and not enough people to replace it yet. Additionally, the Zaslov people were very honest and they're like, hey, listen, there's about $2 billion in missing free cash flow from next year's projections because Warner Media wasn't straight with us on all the numbers. They basically said that. So that's already also hurt people uh, from going into the stock. There are people that want to see what's going to happen. There are not a lot of people running to put their money into the stock. Not as many as are trying to sell it who were AT&T shareholders. And though Zaslav plans to hire a new leader to shepherd the new era of DC superhero films and is preparing to merge Discovery Plus and HBO Max into a super service summer of next year, 2023, an executive at the company says optimism is no longer trickling down to employees who are struggling with low morale and shaky nerves, shaky nerves, because of the expected layoffs. Quote, the future doesn't feel important, says the executive. <laughs> you shouldn't be working at the company if you think the future doesn't feel important. Everyone is totally drained and feels burnt out. 
They also, I'm surprised the article isn't covering this, but a lot of people were upset that the Zaslov people were like, listen, stop it with the work at home stuff. You actually need to get into the office. A lot of people were very upset about that because they're being forced to return uh, from work. It's another big factor in people feeling anxious. And I don't blame them, you know, but at the same time, it's like, they kind of, you're an executive, you're being paid, you kind of need to show up to the office. All of Hollywood is feeling agitated at the moment, of course. The town appeared to be emerging from the nightmarish uncertainty of the pandemic until Netflix's early 2022 subscriber losses forced every major company to question whether the expensive win-at-all-cost mindset that had ruled the streaming worlds wars still made sense, or if it ever did, it never made sense. Streaming is just a distribution channel, and it's an important distribution channel. But eventually, everything turns into the video store model. Eventually, every single, single distribution channel, we saw this in comic book stores versus crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is, comic book stores are still making money and they're still making money for some publishers, but it's not a be all end all single distribution platform. Uh, right now in crowdfunding, that's where it's at, it, direct to consumer sales, partly because we can sell, you know, anywhere from 60 to $200 worth of product directly to a consumer with crowdfunding where you can't do anything near like that with traditional distribution. But again, crowdfunding has its limitations. It's not everything either. Suddenly, the one-time Wall Street darling was laying people off, Netflix, and executives were touting their reined-in spending. And that was before fears of a recession ratcheted up. We're in a recession right now, okay? By all the definitions, we're in a recession. And unfortunately, it looks like financially, things are gonna get, gonna get worse before they get better for a variety of reasons. Um, two quarters of negative GDP growth in the United States, that's what we've always called a recession. Media is trying to protect the present um, administration, the presidency, it's fine, but you have to be real in the world. Former Disney CEO Bob Iger couldn't resist noting the jitters were in the air when he sat down with an interview for Kara Swisher at the recent code conference gathering of media and tech executives and politicians. Somehow Bob Iger just happened to retire immediately right before the pandemic. His timing was amazing. His record and his history were intact. He didn't have any trouble to deal with and he was out. He got lucky. Quote, right now in the media and entertainment space in the age is the age of great anxiety, Iger said. With his relaxed demeanor and retirement stubble, no doubt making some executives in the audience jealous. He made so much money uh, working at Disney. It's unbelievable. People who are running these big companies are anxious. Even streaming companies are anxious. Investors are anxious. Advertisers are anxious. The creative community is anxious. Agents are anxious. Everybody's anxious. They're anxious because this is an era of great transformation and there are still a lot of unknowns. Zaslav's not an anxious. Those unknowns are particularly obvious at Warner Bros. Discovery where the insiders say they've been feeling unmoored, disconnected, as they await clear guidance from leaders. The new regime is still in the midst of merging two companies, which combined have about 40,000 employees with distinct portfolios of entertainment assets, including HBO, CNN, Warner Brothers Studios, Animal Planet, TLC, HTV, and the Oprah Winfrey Network, among other properties. Don't forget DC Comics. It's a very important property. For the Warner Brothers staffers who have thus far survived the merger, it's been a period of particular whiplash, according to the exec, as Zaslav and his team have very publicly reversed the streaming first business strategy set forth by Kylar. And what's so interesting about that is it means there is accountability at the company. You can't just say, oh, we're gonna do whatever feels right. Horrible interview, scary interview with Kareem, I forget his last name, the head of distribution at Disney. I covered this in um, a video just the other day. Um, what is it? I think it's this one. Woke Broke Disney. On, uh, Kareem Daniels, that's his name. That's the gentleman's name. Talking about how, oh, we're making fantastic things and we're not really thinking about canceling anything, not because it's a success, but because it's just gonna sit in the library and that's great. He's in charge of distribution. The way the guy speaks, <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's the first time I've ever said during a, a video like directly like, I do not like what this guy's saying, and there is no accountability at Disney. Although that is starting to change as a recent announcement about um, Disney being chased by institutional investors, and um, they have folded on their dispute with Dan Loeb, and they've 
reached a settlement with him to bring in this um, new board member, uh, Carolyn Everson, who is an accomplished um, executive and uh, is known for her direct to consumer uh, businesses that she's been in. Uh, so that is interesting. But um, there's going to be accountability at one of our discovery all day long. And that is something that it is scary to be an employee working there and to know like, all right, well, there's a new management team. They don't want just smiles. They want results. That's difficult. So you can feel for them, but look, it just means you have to buckle down and, and really deliver for the employer. Aside from a few bright moments, the hiring of veteran film execs Michael DeLuca and Pam Abadie to run the film studio, locking HBO chief Casey Bloys into a new five-year contract and a tour de force showing at the Emmys, they did really well at the Emmys, what the Warner Bros. Discovery leadership has been focusing on is the unpleasant cost-cutting that accompanies major mergers. It's not unpleasant for them, though. And Warner Bros. Discovery did this with uh, scripts. They've done it before. They're, they're doing it now, and they'll probably do it again. In addition to shelving Batgirl, Batgirl, how could they do that? And removing from HBO Max titles such as HBO drama series Vinyl and the Robert Zemeckis movie remake The Witches, Zasloff has also shuttered fledgling streamer CNN+. Plus. What a mess that was. They had $300 million in costs and $100 million in promotion, additional paid promotion in CNN+. Plus. What a waste of money before Zaslav got there. Killed an ambitious and expensive series in development from J.J. Abrams. Freaking uh, a couple of them, but one of Strange Adventures was one. Another one was going to be the Constantine BIPOC series, now killed so they can make a, a Constantine film. And largely scrapped plans to air scripted pro programming on basic cable networks, TNT and TBS going forward. So they're not going to fund scripted, expensive scripted shows that can't possibly recoup the investment. They're not doing that. That's good. It's it's not good if you love the show, but it's it's good that they have to do things that make sense. If they don't do things that make sense, nothing great is ultimately going to come out of it. There has also been the steady drip off layoffs including roughly 70 people who worked for HBO Max, in particular those on reality and uh, live action family programming teams, and about 100 sales executives, um, and they sold advertising. They're, but they could lose as many as another 900 sales executives, and then we'll lose, some of them will be just from people like getting laid off and not continuing, but or not, excuse me, they were laying off and getting retired and, and not replacing those people, but a lot of it too, because it's inefficient to sell advertising on all the individual different channels when you can have like a smaller number of sales reps selling multiple channels simultaneously. That's absolutely what they should be doing. They've talked about that and they're doing it. He's a slash and burn guy, a top talent rep says of Zasloff, who built a reputation at Discovery for running a lean operation. Slash and burn. It's like, no, and of course, an agent, I always say this, was like, of course, agents and managers are going to be really pissed because like, no, they're not going to be handing out money hand over fist. You've got to prove that what you have is worth paying for or they're not doing it. All this change is making it hard for anyone at the company to get work done, source says. sources say. What kind of work are you talking about? The situation couldn't have been helped by a recent Hollywood Reporter story because that was an attack on the company. Hollywood Reporter is going to attack anyone that attacks business as usual at Hollywood. The story suggested that another merger, perhaps with NBC Universal, might lie ahead. Yeah, anything might lie ahead and a comet might hit the earth, but it's not going to happen. There's no way it could happen before 2024 that could even be discussed because of the recent tax-free reverse Morris Trust merger they did with Warner Media and Discovery because of tax treatment issues, which would mean that the tax treatment issue would be something like they'd have to actually pay income on some number like $40 billion. It's not happening. And NBC Universal, you know, they talk about how, oh, well, you know, uh, Warner Bros. Discovery has a lot of debt. It does have a lot of debt. It's got 50 billion in debt because it just paid down or 52, some number like that, 50, 52. Uh, or, but they just paid down 6 billion in debt over the last three months. They have free cash flow of something like 2.5 billion every quarter right now. I can't say if that's going to last for every quarter or not, but if it did, that would be 10 billion a year in free cash flow, which they can use to pay down additional debt. How much debt does um, Comcast Universal have? Some people ask me about mergers with Universal. Well, they have like 100 billion in debt, which they can manage. They can pay it off. They also pay a dividend at Comcast Universal, which is like profit sharing. They buy their own stock back to keep the stock up. 
which is effectively like a dividend. Um, but Comcast has got $100 billion of its own debt to screw around with. So it's not like they could just say, oh, we'll just pay off your debt. No, they can't just pay off their debt. They're paying their debt off just fine at Warner Brothers Discovery. Quote, we are not for sale. Zaslov told at a recent meeting with uh, staffers, we covered that in the video, according to a person who attended the meeting. He also used the meeting to allay concerns among his employees, letting them know that the integration of the companies, which is happening by division as each leader reorganizes their team and sets their new organizational chart, should be mostly behind them by the end of the year. So if you can survive to the end of the year, you're good. But you, you really do have to perform for these guys. The changes at Warner Brothers Discovery are being felt by the creative community. We're already hearing from artists who have shows and movies there, says the rep. They're cutting everything back. That includes Discovery Plus, where a producer who regularly pitches the streamer says there's been a holding pattern as of late. Since the merger, they have not bought anything. My instinct is that it's the year of the pause. They're in a different mode. Um, they've also cut a lot of animation. I'm surprised they're not talking about it here. But there have been multiple, multiple shows that were cut. And it, to me, uh, when I was a kid, I was a comic book artist, like 12 years old, never that great. Uh, but I was passionate about it. And it, it kills me to see so many shows getting hurt. I don't like that. Um, the animators, you know, they put their heart and soul into this. It's very hard to sell an animated show. It's hard to get paid. It's hard to you know, earn money from residuals. And by the cancellation of these shows, they're not just canceling a show and they're like, oh, what they'll market the previous season. Like they're canceling it super hardcore where you can't even find the original season except for like pirated copies. Um, so it's very hard for, for animators to put it in their portfolio and even find other work. It's very sudden. I wish they weren't doing that, but they're doing it. And look, I, I have published more than a thousand comic books. I've had my ups and downs in publishing. Um, and you know, you get really hurt doing things that you're passionate uh, doing. So um, you got to learn that lesson and, and just keep networking and, and keep working hard. Now at HBO Max, where deal making naturally slowed across many divisions as executives awaited post-merger instructions, buying has also been anemic, very reduced. Say three people who do business with the streamer. That's in part because the August layoffs diminished the, no, the nonfiction and the live action family divisions. A lot of us are in mourning about what's happening over there, says a top TV agent who has become accustomed to a frenzied pace of buying for the HBO Max <laughs> service during its first two years of operation. They could sell them anything. They were getting all these checks. People weren't even looking at the numbers. Like, yeah, because it was a, a buildup. It was a, a, a growth mode. Now they're not as concerned about growth as much as they are about profitability and making sure that HBO Max is a viable distribution channel for them, which means Viable means it can't be distribution at all costs. It's got to still make financial sense. It resulted in hits like The Flight Attendant and Hacks, though the HBO Max and HBO teams have now been largely consolidated into one unit, which don't you think HBO Max and HBO should like actually be one entity? A person with knowledge of the situation tells Vanity Fair, there is no shift in strategy. That suggests that any slowdown in buying is a temporary response to the broader transition at the company. That's wishful thinking. It, they're going to slow down their buying. Everything is going to be looked at very carefully. And this is what they do. You know, uh, previous articles, just when um, Zaslav was talking about their decisions to make content at Discovery, they were talking about like, well, listen, are we going to get more or, or less revenue if we have 300 hours of original programming for like their cooking channel? Or do they need 400 to get the additional additional um subscribers and the additional revenue happening. And if you can't show him that an extra hundred hours worth of original content, let's say per month, is going to generate more subscribers, it's going to push and move the needle. They're not doing it. And the sa that same attitude is getting extended to everything in, um, you know, uh, all the Warner uh, properties, all the HBO, all that content. And they'll take some chances, but it's it's all going to be very, very uh, predicted in terms of what they're willing to do. Assuming that buying does return in full, the needs of the new combined streamer will likely be different. See, while HBO is expected to remain a home for prestige dramas, comedies, and buzzy docuseries, meaning people talking about them, an agent says HBO Max's appetite now feels more surgical, pointing, mm-hmm 
pointing to the project The Penguin, in which Colin Farrell will reprise his role as the DC villain as an example of spending on the things that they have reason to believe will perform, aka stories based on existing IP. Also builds a library. Despite the high anxiety at Warner Bros. Discovery, most sources believe that Zaslav is doing what he has to do by ushering in an age of relative streaming austerity. Even critics acknowledging that the heavy spending at HBO Max under the previous regime was not sustainable. So they even admit it wasn't sustainable, even as critics. He's not wrong that we needed to have a more thoughtful strategy around content monetization, says the Warner Brothers Discovery executive. But that doesn't make this period of turmoil any easier. <laughs> so, okay, so you agree with him as an executive, but you're complaining that it's not easy times. Like, well, when was this going to happen? This is an executive talking. Uh, I don't know if I'd keep someone like that if I knew it was. Probably good at not using their name. Across the industry, people are waiting for all kinds of other shoes to drop, including a recession or another writer's strike. They have writing strikes like all the time. You don't know what's around the corner, says a second agent. It's a weird time. It's very, very significant for Warner Brothers Discovery, for fans of the brands, but also for all of entertainment culture that there's this major company that's focused on discipline, merit, honoring brands and producing quality content and not focused on political social agenda pushing representation things. Because now you have, we did videos about this before, um, how Disney was under pressure from two important investors, Vivek Ramaswamy, as well as Dan Loeb. And uh, Dan Loeb has been negotiating with Bob Chapek, who I will say often is a terrible negotiator. You say a lot of bad things about Bob Iger, but you can't say Bob Iger was a bad negotiator. The guy made amazing deals. But uh, Bob Chapek, um, He's agreed to have another new board member join Disney. Now, is this board member going to come in and change everything? No, but it's it's something where it shows you it's not something that Disney wanted to do. It's not something Disney was looking to do. It was something Disney was forced to do. Um, just the other day, we did this story, which also covered this article. Institutional owners may consider drastic measures as the Walt Disney Company's recent $21 billion drop adds to long-term losses. This is a $21 billion stock value drop. The company didn't lose $21 billion, um, but it, the stock value going down is a big deal because 63% of the company is owned by large institutional investors, and that affects the institutional investor's rate of return uh, for the people that give them money to invest. So that is when they say, when, when Yahoo Finance is out there saying they may consider drastic measures while they're investing in Wall, Wall Street, uh, in Walt Disney's company, that could include a, a lot of serious things, including asking for changes in management. So with that press, outside pressure now from, and 63%, you, you didn't guess right, you know, you guess right. 63% is controlling interest in the company. Like they have a lot of influence acting together. So that's forced Disney to capitulate and to give in uh, to Dan Loeb, who wanted this other board member added so she could start to identify changes at Disney. I think that Disney is such a big animal. It's such a big thing to deal with that what Loeb was trying to do was to get someone on who is uh, indisputably accomplished uh, and could make sure she was aware of what their decision-making process was when they look to do things. Because what they've been doing lately has been, uh, you know, destroying their brands, uh, picking fights with state governments. None of those things uh, contribute to the future good of the company. And the distribution guy, uh, you heard me mention uh, earlier, uh, Kareem Daniels, um, he's terrible. I mean, just... just from hearing him talk in one interview. There's no accountability for success for how they're producing content over at Disney. So let's get into this real quick. Um, CNBC, Disney reaches deal with activist investor at Third Point, will add former Facebook executive to its board. Disney has reached a deal, these are the key points, with activist Dan Loeb. The agreement includes adding former executive Carol Everson to its board of directors. The deal comes a week after a few weeks after Third Point took a new stake in Disney valued at about $1 billion or 0.4% of the company, and he urged the media company to spin out the property ESPN. Now, 
Um, this article handles it a little bit better, I think, for us. And, uh, you know, it's not like Dan Loeb holds, you know, 10% of Disney stock or 5%. He doesn't even have 1% of Disney stock right now. But he's got enough and he's very well respected. And he could certainly have made a lot of problems for Disney at their next shareholder meeting. And all he would have to do is get the attention of a couple of these major institutional investors. And all of a sudden, there's a management shakeup which is not something Bob Chapek wants. This is from 247wallstreet.com. Disney made a surprising announcement. It will add Carolyn Everson, a former executive at Facebook, to its board. She is an odd choice. She has held senior positions at several tech companies, but has not been one of the tech industry's outright stars. She, however, the reality is that she joins Disney's board due to pressure from activist troublemaker, third point, which barely owns any Disney shares. Third Point has made enough difficult observations about Disney management that the entertainment company's board decided it's best to make Third Point go away. When Third Point made its investment, the Wall Street Journal pointed out its ownership amounted to well under 1% of Disney shares. Why should a position of that size give it any leverage? Perhaps it's because the criticisms of Disney CEO Bob Chapek were correct. At least the Disney board decided it was best to get the Third Point off their back. Susan Arnold, chairman of the board, commented, Carolyn's extensive background, including roles in a number of high-profile, complex global companies, brings a welcome and invaluable perspective as we continue to focus on expanding our brand and global reach. Same could be said for hundreds of other board candidates. However, none of them were part of a settlement with Third Point. What did Disney get? Disney got uh, Third Point is now prevented from presenting its own slate of directors. Literally, its own slate of directors. It's third Point could have brought up for a vote at the next shareholders meeting, a whole group of its own directors to run and control and make the major decisions at Disney, which would include continuing or firing um, the relationship with um, Bob Chapek. Uh, he, they gave that up at third point. A fight over the board's composition would be a long, expensive, and a major distraction for the Disney board and management. It would also encourage third point to continue its criticism of Disney executives and the decisions. Disney shares are down 23% in the last two years. By contrast, the S&P is up 7%. All right, let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your guys' comments. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. And I will see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.